Welcome to Learn It Training. The exercise files for today's course are located in the video description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hello everyone and welcome to Copilot from Microsoft PowerPoint. My name is Joe, I'm going to be facilitating this course for you today. Today we are talking about Microsoft PowerPoint with Copilot capabilities. Copilot is amazing with PowerPoint and it allows us to start to create presentations within seconds of just telling it what we want to see in our presentation. Now, before we get into Microsoft PowerPoint, we have to understand what is Copilot. Looking to support our channel and get a great deal? Become a member today to unlock ad free videos. That's right, your favorite courses without a single ad. Interested in a specific video? Purchase one of our ad-free courses individually. Looking for even more? Gain access to exams, certificates, and exclusive content at learnitanytime.com. More information can be found in the video description below. Copilot is a powerful add-in tool for Microsoft Excel that allows users to automate repetitive tasks, improve efficiency, and also save time. Now it utilizes machine learning and AI technology to analyze your workflow and then suggest code snippets based on your specific needs. And with Copilot, you can automate data manipulation, formatting, calculations, and so much more without actually needing extensive programming knowledge. Now a couple things with Copilot is the way that it comes out with outputs. An input is when you ask it a question and then the output will be the result or the answer to that question. And the way that it randomizes this is known as stochastic process. Now, stochastic process in AI models can lead to slightly different results each time the model is run. So even though we put in the same input, right, I can say, hey, how much does this equal out to my total sales? It might not be word for word the same exact output. And this is often what is desired, right? We often want randomness so that none of us have the same answers. So just know that if you're following along with this video, that you will never get the same answer as me. Unless it's something really straightforward, like give me the total sales that I've made. It will give you the total sales. That's not random. But if you asked it to give you insights, it might give you something totally different than the insights it gives me. Another thing is a couple of the pros and cons of using Copilot. So we're going to start off with the pros. Productivity boost, right? It aims to enhance productivity by automating various tasks, such as writing emails or creating presentations or even taking meeting notes, which is great. We can also integrate it with Microsoft Suite, which is what we're doing today. We are going to be looking at Excel's version of Copilot. We also have to understand that it is a natural language process, which means we're able to just put in inputs naturally and then we get results. And the best part about Copilot is learning and adaptation. It's always designed to learn from our user interactions. So the more questions we ask over time, it starts to understand how we think about our data. Now some of the cons of using Copilot are first off potential bias and inaccuracies, right? Of course, this is a new technology, so sometimes it might generate inaccurate information based on the data it was trained on. And you'll notice that throughout the course that sometimes I might not get the exact answer I want, and I need to teach it what I want. You also see here that there's an adoption in the learning curve. As with any new technology, you're going to have to get used to using the interface or even certain input commands that you're going to task it or certain prompts that you want to look at. So that's why this video is going to be super helpful for you, because it's going to allow for you to understand those learning curves. And last but not least, ethical concerns, of course. You know, it's an AI assistant. So we want to make sure that we're not just using it to generate misinformation or plagiarize content. Now, the last quick note before we actually dive into this is that Microsoft Copilot is still in development. And its final capabilities, the pricing, availability, is yet to be determined. So as with anything else that is AI powered, it's crucial to approach it with a critical mindset, right? We wanna be sure that we're maintaining our privacy and security. We're going to comply with any of our company's rules, right? And 
this AI is definitely not a replacement for human expertise or decision making. So we are actually using it as a tool, not a replacement. I've opened up PowerPoint and just created a blank presentation. Now we're going to use Copilot to actually create a presentation for us. So in order to do this, we're going to go to the Home tab. And inside of the Home tab, we're going to go all the way at the end, and you'll see Copilot. Now, funny enough, you'll see Copilot next to Designer. We're going to talk about this in a later section, but they go hand in hand together. But for now, let's just open up Copilot Paint. And you'll see once you click on Copilot, it opens up the pane. Now, right away, when you open up Copilot Paint, you can see here that there's some things you can try. So they give you a couple of prompts right away, like create a presentation or create a presentation from a file that already exists, or add a slide about something. So you can use these three prompts right away, or you can ask questions about the presentation, or if you want to view more of the prompts, you'll see at the bottom, there's this little book icon. This is actually where we can view prompts for PowerPoint. So if you click on it, you'll see we can either create, and if you click the little parent icon, it shows you create a presentation from a file, create a presentation about something, add a slide about something. You can go to edit, where you can add an image of something. That's a pretty cool one. We can go to ask, where we can give specific examples for something. And if you want to view more prompts, just click on view more prompts, and it'll open up prompts from the Copilot Lab. We'll talk about Copilot Lab in a little bit, but this is where we can see other prompts as well. I'll just click the X. So let's try it out. Let's actually create a presentation from scratch. So you can either just click create a presentation or you could just type it out here. I like to just click it because it automatically fills it in for you. And let's create a presentation. Uh, we could do it about anything, but what I'm interested in is creating a presentation about health. And we'll just say health. Let's see what it what it comes up with. Create a presentation about health. And it's going to take a moment. It's just thinking about everything, going through all the different information and data that Copilot has access to. And you can see at the bottom, it's starting to work. It's downloading media. And there we go. It says, OK, here you go. A presentation about health has been created with multiple slides. If you like, I can help you rewrite slides, or you can use Designer to adjust the layout. Once again, Designer is going to come in handy in the way that you want to change the design. Now, what I love about this is that look how amazing this presentation looks. First off, we get this starting page here, the starting slide, where it says tips for a healthy life. It has a nice little background picture. And believe it or not, we also have access to, yeah, speaker notes. <laughs> so we can quickly talk to, um, you know, an audience and have those speaker notes. You'll also see here, you could press play, and it has a movement. Yeah, it's a media. How awesome is this? I just love this so much. I really do. So that's another fun thing, and it just stays on a loop until you stop it. If we go to the next slide, it says eat a balanced diet, eat a variety of fresh fruits and vegetables, include whole grains and lean protein in your diet, and limit your intake of sugar, salt, and saturated fats. So yeah, that makes sense. And then you have your speaker notes at the bottom here as well. On the next page, we have stay hydrated, drink at least eight cups of water a day, avoid sugary drinks, limit alcohol consumption. Go to the next slide. It just has an awesome amount of information. Regular exercise is good for you. And manage stress. So as you can see, within seconds, it has created a full presentation for us with speaker notes, with images. But you might be wondering, does it include animations? Well, let's take a look. So we see here the nice movement. Go to our next slide. So right now there are no animations here. Go to the next one. So that's the one thing that we would need to include. 
So if I ask it to include animation, let's see what it says. I don't think Copilot can do this yet, but I want to see. Can you add animation to my bullet points? Let's see what it says here. I'm going to say that it's going to probably come back with it can't do it yet, but I'm always curious because they're constantly updating these apps. Pulling things together. Okay. So, yeah, I can't do it. I can answer general questions or those about presentations, but they can't add animations. So, that's just one little thing you have to do, which is simple enough. I'll just go to animations and just fly them in real quick. Boom. Done. Go to the next one, just click, flying, done. Go to the next one, click, flying, done. And we have a fully created presentation with speaker note, and we are all set to go. Now, why I love speaker notes so much for me personally is because I use them while I'm presenting. For instance, when I'm presenting, I actually don't see this view. I see my presenter view. And what this presenter view does for me is it allows for me to see my speaker notes on the other side. So I'm going to showcase this to everyone. There it is. So now I have my speaker notes right here. I know exactly what people are seeing currently. And also, I can see what I'm getting ready to talk about next. So I would say, hey everyone, my name is Joe. We're talking about tips for a healthy lifestyle. Health is wealth, and nothing is more important than taking care of your body. Incorporating these tips into your lifestyle can lead to a healthier, happier life. See what I did there? I didn't even have to think about what I was going to say. The notes are already there for me. And then when I'm ready to go to the next slide here, now I can say, eat a balanced diet. This is one of the most important things you can do for your health, and then I can go through. Eat a variety of fresh fruits and vegetables whole grains, right? So those speaker notes, I always say, are some of the most important things that you need. Yeah, this is amazing. We asked it to create a presentation, and it went above and beyond. We just went over how we can create a presentation from scratch with just a sentence in Copilot. Now I'm going to show you how Copilot works with templates that are pre-existing. So the first thing I want to do is select a template. So you can go to more themes on your startup page and you can look for whatever makes sense to you. Let's go with, I really like this design right here, this minimalist presentation. So I'm going to use that one and click create. Now at this point, it all has some sort of theme here with different topics. And I'm actually going to use Copilot once again to create another presentation. But what I'm interested to see is, is it going to keep my existing theme or is it going to replace it? So can we use our template with creating a presentation? So I'm gonna see if I can do that. Create a presentation about lions, but keep my same theme. And let's see if it can do this. It's looking over it. It's going to be very exciting. And I love exploring like this with Copilot. This is something you can do too. See what works, what doesn't work. It's a learning and ever learning. Let's see what it says. Okay. So it says that creating a new presentation will replace your existing slide. So you may want to save a copy first. Or I can say create a new draft. Let's create a new draft and let's see what it does with this. And like I said, it's an ever learning system. So this is what's most exciting. So it did replace it, but I mean, it kept some of that coloration there. Once again, we do get the lions, the king of the jungle. I love that. Lion behaviors, lion physical characteristics. We get a bunch of notes with it as well. And we're just ready to go. The one thing that we have to do, as always, is add in animations. So while this presentation looks really amazing, it is not using my original theme. So it's better off, if you're going to use Copilot for presentations, 
I would say just simply use a blank presentation because choosing a template is just not going to work anyway. For those of you that might have companies that need to really think about branding and they might have pre-existing slides for you, let's say, what I would do in that case is after you get the presentation, then I would just strip away everything. So you'll see here that the slides are here. We could change this to a title slide or we can change this layout to look like this. So they still exist, your original theme, your original layout, your designs. You're going to have to change each slide. So for this one, once again, I want this to just be the section one or an agenda or content. So I'll call this agenda. I'll do this one as an agenda layout as well. And just be careful because you see what's happening with the text boxes and everything. We're going to have to switch those back. So you can still switch these to what it needs to be. If I want to change the layout to, let's say, two content, it keeps your content there. It's just the other way it wasn't showcasing. And you can still have it be as similar to your branding or to your layouts that already exist as you can. And there it is. All right. So that's one way to sort of overcome that template if you are forced to use some sort of template like that. Do I see this for, you know, changing in the foreseeable future? Maybe, you know, we'll, we'll see. I know Microsoft is trying to be as accommodating as possible. So you will notice Designer keeps popping up. Like I said before, Copilot and Designer are working together very well. We're actually going to discuss that in our next section. So what we're going to talk about next is how Copilot and Designer work so well together. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a presentation with Copilot. I want to talk about Shark. So I'm going to say create a presentation about Sharks. They're interesting, right? So create a presentation about sharks. It's going to work on it, look over the things for us, all the stuff that it always does. And then once it comes through, we'll take a look at what sort of design it does for us. So it looks like for this one, it's not working. It says, I'm sorry, I'm not able to generate those slides for you. Is there something else I can do to help you build your presentation? Let's do the same prompt because it's funny to see, as I explained before, that. This process is randomized, so all the outputs are always randomized. See if it does it for the next time I say it. And it looks like it might not work for a second time. Oh, actually, it's working this time. And look at that. So, funny enough, this is a prime example of how young Copilot truly is. That's why I always say to you, if it doesn't work the first time, try it again. This is just proof right here that sometimes it's not going to work the first time around but it will work the second. And look how amazing these speaker notes are too. It has so many different things. So, and I love this, look at this. The media background, that's always so cool. Now at this point, I'm gonna also open up my designer because some of these slides I might not like. For instance, I do like this, this looks great, but it doesn't look like the rest of it. There's a lot of like pink and light colors purples, but then there's just this dark color here. This would make more sense for me. I actually like this one more, and then I can have it like that. So that just looks a lot nicer for me than that other one. So that's why the designer just comes into play right away. It looks so great. So at this point, let's take a look at what they actually put in here, pictures. I like the little pluses and those. Sharks and their behaviors. Remember, we always have to go in and add the animations. Shark, anatomy. You know, I really don't like the way this looks. So once again, I'm going to go over. I'm going to go to my home tab and choose designer. And let's see what else it could come up with. Okay, this looks a little lighter. I do like this. The reason I don't like the way that this one looks is it sort of looks less like content. And it looks more like a section change and i'm not changing you know talking about the topic of charts so that's why i want to change this design and it's important to do that have similar designs going through same thing here 
want it to look a little more similar to what we have. Let's see if I could do this one too. Oh, there it is. And now we have everything looking super similar. It looks very consistent. And once again, I'm just going to add in here all of my animations. And then I'll show you what the overall outcome is. And it's just going to look great. And let's see what it looks like. So here we go, the wonders of sharks. Sharks and their behaviors. Three points about that. Shark anatomy there. Sharks and conservation. Shark myths and facts. Sharks and popular culture. I love the sharks in the clouds. I don't even know why there's sharks in the clouds like that. But there we go. We have an amazing presentation right away. And we were able to then sort of make it more consistent with the designer. So that's why I always say co-pilot, designer go together well. And what I love about this new system is that you'll see co-pilot up top. You can switch to designer at the bottom. So you can switch between the two quickly. The next thing I want to talk about is how we can actually add slides to our presentation. So we have this presentation here. We've been talking about sharks. And what I want to do is you can click on change topic if you like. What this does is it refreshes all of your past prompts. So when you're asking about things and you sort of want to change gears or change topic, you can click change topic. It's going to reset all your history of prompts. And then it's like, what would you like to do now? Now, this is going to go back to our original three prompts. We've created a presentation. We'll actually talk about creating the presentation from a file in a moment. But we want to talk about how can we add a slide about. So I'm thinking I have sharks, their behaviors, anatomy, conservation, myths, facts, and popular culture but I don't really have anything about the relationship between sharks and humans. So I'm gonna to choose to add a slide about, or you could just type it. I'm gonna say add a slide about the relationship between sharks and humans. Let's see if it can do that for us. Remember, if it doesn't work the first time, always just try again. Oh, there we go. So you'll see here, once again, it keeps the design, which I love. We don't have to worry about design issues. It continues to stay consistent. It adds a ton of fun little notes here that we can use. And then we see the relationship between sharks and humans. Sharks are not usually aggressive towards humans. Shark attacks are rare and often the result of mistaken identity. Human activity has greatly impacted shark populations. So now we have a little more information. If I want, I can add even more to this. I can ask it to edit this slide. So let's say that I do want to edit this slide. I can say to please edit slide 7 to include two more facts about relationships. between sharks and humans. And let's see what it does. And it's always important to get a little more specific. For instance, I'm saying, please edit slide seven. I'm not just saying, please edit, you know, to include two more facts about relationships between sharks and humans. I'm specifying that I wanted to add this information to slide seven. So we'll see what it can do. So right now it says, I'm sorry, but I can't do that. Let's ask it to do something a little different. Let's say, please rewrite the facts on slide seven. I did forget the S on slide, so we'll see what happens. But hopefully, it'll understand what I meant. OK, so it couldn't do that either. Let's keep trying. Let's say, please 
add more info or more information to this slide. Let's see if it can do that. And I'm saying this slide now to see if it knows that I'm selected on slide seven. But once again, this is just stuff. And I'm not sure which slide you're referring to. Could you please specify? And I'll say, um, what is the average lifespan of a shark? What is the different types? No, we'll actually answer this. We'll say, please add more information to slide seven. I think it was almost there. It was almost ready to go. So, and it also started giving us prompts to ask more questions about sharks, which I think is awesome. So let's do this. What are different types of sharks? Let's ask that question and see what it comes up with and see if we can actually add this to this slide deck. Oh wow, look at all of these, that's pretty cool. So it gives us all of this and we can quickly copy this information and then put it on a slide. Or we could have just said, you know, please add in how many different species of sharks there are as a slide. So as you can see, editing slides aren't as easy as it looks, you know, you can't just say, hey, edit my slide because it's not understanding what I want. But we're gonna just try one more time See if it can please add more information to slide seven. Because as you can see, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Sometimes you just have to repeat yourself because you always get a randomized output. So you can ask the same question three times and get a different answer each time. Except when it comes to data. If you're asking, for instance, uh, you know, how many words are in this presentation, that's gonna always be the same. So yeah, it looks like it's not gonna allow us to do it for this one, but that's okay. Let's see other prompts that we can actually use in terms of edit. Add an image of something or organize this presentation. So even though we can't really edit the slide so well, we can edit by adding images or even organizing. What about understanding? So to summarize this presentation. We're actually gonna talk about being able to do this a little later, create, we can create a presentation or add a slide about, we just did that. So try out different prompts for adding and editing your slides and see what you come up with. So you'll see here that I have this healthy eating habits document. And I decide that I actually don't wanna just have this document like this. I actually wanna turn this into a PowerPoint presentation we can take a file from our computers and transform them into PowerPoint presentations with Copilot now. It is amazing. So let's see what it comes up with. We have healthy eating habits, we have an introduction, then we talk about balanced nutrition, portion control, hydration, fiber-rich foods, and that's it. It's just a quick one-page document. But let's see what happens. So the first thing I'm gonna do is switch over and let's switch over to PowerPoint. I just opened up a blank presentation and I'm gonna use the prompt, create presentation from file. When it does that, it pulls up all these different files that we have access to. And it tells you to type or search and copy or paste the link of the Word document. Now we know what the Word document is called. So I'm gonna type in a couple of words here and I'm gonna grab my document, Word intro example. Once I have that document, I'll then click send and let's see what it comes up with. Now, it is looking through an entire document and then it's going to transform it into a presentation. So it might take a little bit of time here, but it shouldn't take more than two minutes. And you'll see that it's starting to outline the presentation that it's gonna generate. So it's saying, here's the outline, we're talking about healthy eating habits, introduction, balanced nutrition, portion control, hydration, fiber-rich foods. So everything we just read about in that document, and now it's generating the slides, adding speaker notes as well. And look at this. I mean, this is amazing. 
we now have our entire Word document transformed into a slide chain. Introduction, I love this. Balance and nutrition, all the things we've talked about. Portion control, all the pictures, hydration. I mean, this is just within seconds. It's it's not even taking us that long. It just looks awesome. Now I will say this isn't perfect, as you can see here. These last slides are a little weird. Vegetables, I kind of split it, nuts, and fruits. So I'll probably delete those two and just add these in and change this bullet point too. I don't know what that bullet point was. So even though it came over and it was pretty much perfect. There are a couple of things we still need to edit, so I'll add in the nuts here and fruit. And then we could get rid of these ones. And I think that looks great. Let's see. Whole grains, fiber rich, fiber rich. So we're going to have to make a change here. Let's see what we can do. I'm just going to take this and copy it, or even cut it, and let's paste it here. Let's make this into a slide deck and okay. And let's make this the same. I'll use my format painter. Those all look good. I want them to all be on the same level. And this is going to look amazing. And then we're going to use that designer tool just like before. I do want them all to. I mean, it won't matter once we change the designer. Leave this out. And let's see what designer comes up with with this one. I actually like this a lot, but it doesn't really stay consistent. I mean, a little bit. Yeah, I guess we can still use it. It's, it's pretty much the same, but I do like this. All right, and there we go. We have now just taken our Word document right here and changed it into a PowerPoint presentation. I think that's just amazing. I don't know, it has speaker notes. The only thing we really had to do was a couple of edits, add animations, and we're good to go. Now that I have a slide deck presentation with a lot of information, what I wanna do is go to change topic, and I actually wanna to start to ask some questions about our presentation. So. It's going to say, what would you like to talk about? I want to view some of the prompts that we have where I can understand. It'll say, summarize this. Are there any dates? I also can go to ask to see, give me a specific example from this presentation on how I can improve it for a leader. That's actually a really good one. Let's see if I could do that. How I can improve it for my stakeholders. Let's see if it can give me specific examples on this. And this is pretty amazing. You'll hear me say that a lot because Copilot really is. I mean, there's just so much you can do with it. So it says this response isn't based on the presentation. It says add visuals, use images, charts. So it's just giving me some feedback on overall how to make a presentation better. It's not actually talking about this specific presentation. But if I do want to talk about this specific presentation, you can just add, ask questions about it, like how many slides do I have? How many slides do I have? And let's see what it says. Or are there enough images in this presentation? According to this presentation, your presentation has seven slides. Now I can even get prompted for more questions about this specific presentation. For instance, what is the topic of this presentation? And then it's gonna work on it. Let's see what it comes up with. So this is great. Here's a summary of the deck. So I didn't ask for quite a summary, but this kind of brings us into our next topic, which is being able to summarize our entire presentation. But here's a couple of main ideas here healthy eating, balanced nutrition. You'll even see where it's linked to and you can click straight onto the slide, which I think is pretty awesome. 
let's say, what is the agenda of this presentation? According to this presentation, introduction, balance, nutrition, now it starts to pull out even more information. So now I'm getting deeper into our co-pilot and sort of relevant questions to this presentation. So now I'm going to ask, what is the importance of portion control? Now this might not pull a reference directly. This is directly from my presentation. It even references slide one, right? In, or introduction slide. If I was to ask what is the importance of portion control, it might actually pull this data, but it's pulling it from presentation. So this is pretty awesome. Look at that. Pulling it from the portion control and it makes a link straight to it. So it says, according to the presentation, portion control is crucial for maintaining a healthy weight. If I want to see where that is listed, I can click here. It brings me right to it. Or what are some common portion sizes? We can ask that as well see if it can answer that from this presentation or it has to actually pull information from the web because I don't really see anything about portion sizes I just see be mindful of quantity so even though this referenced my presentation it'll tell you that this response isn't based on the presentation it had to go outside of it to find the answer which it did still and it gives you a common portion size how awesome one cup of raw leafy vegetables, two to three ounces fish or lean meat, one tablespoon of oil or salad. Pretty cool. Now, once we're done asking questions like what are some fiber rich foods or what's the importance of hydration, if we want to reset all of this, always remember to click change top and that will actually reset the whole thing. And then it says, okay, let's change the subject. It's not going to actually ask any of those prompts anymore. We would have to prompt it itself. But ask questions about your presentation. Have fun with this. So we've seen how many different prompts there are for Copilot. And it can be a little overwhelming. But one of the great things about Copilot is it offers us a way to learn about the different prompts. And if you click into View Prompts, you can go to view more prompts and it's going to open up this prompts from copilot this is where we can see all different types of prompts and also examples like add an image of a puppy dog to the slide or create a presentation about hawaii or add an agenda slide or create a presentation based off of a file there's so many different ones get a head start create a presentation generate ideas or organize your thoughts and there's just so many different ones. But if you wanted to see all the different prompts from all the different applications, you would go over to the Copilot Lab. So you'll see here this link, see all prompts in Copilot Lab, and you'll give that a click. Now that we're in Copilot Lab, this is where we can explore the in products. So where Copilot exists, for example, 365. Word, Teams, Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel, even in OneNote or Windows, Loop, Whiteboard, or Forms. You'll see all the prompts to try. And remember that Copilot Lab is here to teach us what sort of prompts exist. Now in the prompts to try, we can save prompts by clicking the little ribbon icon. And we can quickly save a prompt. So if I want to save this one, just click it. And now I have all my saved prompts here. So that's a nice little flag system. Right next to it, you'll see we can filter for whatever app we're using this for, whether we want only Excel or Word or even Outlook prompts. And then what sort of category do you want? What prompt? Do you want to create something or edit it or understand it, ask questions about it, or even just catch up and get summaries? You'll notice that when we're looking at the prompt, it'll explain what the prompt is a nice little category what's new and then you can see an example of what you would write for the prompt you'll see in the bottom left hand corner what the prompt is coming from so which application in this case this would be microsoft 365 this one's a OneNote prompt this one's an outlook prompt a loop prompt and you can go through and find powerpoints and this is also what's really 
cool about this system is that you're learning, right? So if you're like, how do I add an image to a slide? It'll showcase add an image of, and then you can say, for example, a puppy dog to the slide. So if you don't remember that, you can always just save this and then use them later on in your application once you're there. And there's so many different ones, like M Shape, that's a pretty cool one. Microsoft pre-created a bunch of these for us. We can click on Show More. Show More. And there's just so many different ones. Now, once you go through the different prompts and you choose which ones you want to save and use inside of Copilot in those applications, you can then go back to the app and start using them. You'll see down here, we do have a couple of articles for quick tips for better prompts. So summarize this email in two bullet points. You'll see that you're giving more detail and you're specifying that you want two bullet points. That's something that we're going to learn about for Copilot is that we need to really be specific on what we're asking it because, well, it's still a computer, right? We're still talking to computer language. Underneath it, we have FAQs, what is Copilot prompt, or what can I get done with Copilot, how can I get the best responses or results. You'll see a bunch of different articles here. Now going back to the top, you can go into the Get Started, and there's so many different ones. They have for home users, business leaders, or for admins. Let's say that I'm a business leader, and I click into that. If you notice, the service is unavailable right now. So these are services that are starting to come out slowly. There are slow rollouts. So just you know, be patient with it. You'll see this one's still unavailable. And I believe admins is unavailable too. Oh, no, they finally got the admins up. So just wait for the business leaders. That should be coming out soon. And then we'll see here Microsoft Copilot 365 documentation. Get ready for Copilot with 365. Get started with, manage it, get trained on. So they have so many different resources for you to take a look at and utilize. Another thing that's really important with Copilot that I always say is the plugins. This is going to plug into different apps and integrations, not only with just Microsoft, with other technologies as well. So take a look at some of the things that are coming up. And once again, end user copilot resource, copilot lab is one of those resources. This lab is where you meet copilot, you understand what it can do. You can see it in everyday apps. And those are, once again, those prompts, and you can click the little save prompt. So this is more like that main page here. This is the landing page for Copilot Lab, but it's pretty much the same if you go to prompts to try. It'll just bring us back to where we were. What's new? That's always something that's important. I'm always reading up on the latest updates for Microsoft Copilot. Um, you'll see here prompts of the month, what were the most important ones or what were things that weren't working that they've now updated. Transform a doc into a presentation, that's a really cool one. And you can upload document files. We'll actually talk about this in one of our other classes when we get into using Copilot with Word and also using it with PowerPoint. But as you can see here, improvements based on our feedback. Before we talked about how you can submit feedback, it is important. Remember, this technology is young still, so we need to really express what's working or not working for us to make sure that Copilot can evolve into the tool that we need it to be. You can take a look at some of the previous updates as well, our February updates, January, December. Just click on the little carrot icon, and you'll see all of them. And I just love the way that they display like all of the icons. You know that this is specifically for Word. It tells you, you know, what it's for. We're actually going to be talking about Word for the web. So transform your text into a table. This looks like it's only available for Word for the web, so not for the desktop app. That's another thing that's really important with using Copilot. There's going to be different things that work in the online version versus the desktop version. And there we go. So. Always remember that this is still Copilot Lab. We can 
have all the same tabs up top. We can switch between prompts to try, getting started. Remember, for business leader is one that's not available right now, but it will be rolled out sooner than later. And there you go. One of the next things we're going to talk about is using Copilot with the online version of PowerPoint. So I went to my Microsoft 365 account. I'm going to open up the online version. You'll even notice Copilot is here for 365, which we'll showcase in another video. But if I click into PowerPoint and I create a blank presentation, I can now use my Copilot. And you'll see just like before, there is a little bit of a difference with the ribbon. But if I click on Copilot, which is in my home tab still, it's going to give you the same prompts as before. So create a presentation, create a presentation from a file, or even add a slide about. So let's say that I want to, I don't know, maybe create a presentation about, let's do a presentation about Copilot, right? So I'm going to say create a presentation about Copilot. And let's see what it comes up with. We're using Copilot to create a presentation about Copilot. A lot of fun. It's pulling things together. Remember that we do need to add animations, but one of the things that I love about Copilot is that it adds in the speaker notes for us, the imagery for us as well. So there we go, let's take a look. So right away we have the power of GitHub Copilot. How does GitHub Copilot work? So I don't wanna actually use GitHub Copilot. I'm actually gonna change it. I'm gonna say, um, create a presentation about Microsoft Copilot. And I'm very curious to see if, since I'm doing another create a presentation, if it's going to erase everything that has already been resulted here. So it'll say create a new presentation will replace your existing slide. So you may want to copy for save a copy. And I'm like, no, that's okay. Create a new draft. See if it's going to do it for me. All right, there we go. It replaced them. Look how cool this is once again. So introduction to Microsoft Copilot. It says uses AI to suggest code snippets trained on massive code base, saves time and increases productivity, benefits of using Microsoft Copilot, and then limitations of it. Requires internet connection, may not work for all coding scenarios. I also want to add in a couple of slides here. So let's do this. Let's say add a slide about Copilot with PowerPoint. And then I'll do add a slide about Copilot with Excel and also Word, our three main Microsoft suite applications. Let's see. So why use Microsoft Copilot? Copilot uses AI. So it's now saying why instead of giving us what I wanted. It just says a slide about Copilot. But really, I want to add a slide about Copilot with PowerPoint. So let's, I'll keep this one, but I'll say add a slide about PowerPoint working with. Copilot, something like that. That way that I'm a little more specific and hopefully you'll understand what I mean and then put that information in there. And then we'll work with the other ones on a slide about Excel working with Copilot and Word. Okay, there we go. That makes it exactly what I wanted. I don't know what this extra one was for, so we can delete that one out. That just kind of came up with a random one. But now I'm going to do the same thing. I'll just copy this. It'll be a lot easier. And let's paste this in. And then we'll do one more word. And then we're going to see it all come together. And I do want to change a couple of things here. I don't like all of the designs. It's always important to add animations and designs. But as you can see, the online version works very much the same 
as the desktop version. Let's do our last one here where we talk about Word working with. And there we go. It is going to come through. There it is. All right. So Microsoft Copilot and Word, PowerPoint and Copilot, and Excel and Copilot. So now that I have this, I'm going to open up my designer and let's see if we can change the designs because this kind of all looks a little all over the place. Um, let's see what we can do here. I actually do like this design, so I'll use this one. Let's see what it has on this one. I like I like the line like this. I think this looks good. Uh, let's go with this one. Once again, keeping things consistent. I always think that's the most important thing. All right, and let's go with a couple more and then we'll add our animations and take a look at our final product. And last but not least. All right, so I think that looks good. It's more consistent with our theme and let's just see if they have any other ideas. That looks great. So we got our line here, then we have the line going across for the rest of them with our little plus and circle. The last thing we have to do is just add animations to this. And we'll do the simple fly in for all of these. And then we'll run the presentation and let's take a look at some of the notes that they gave us just to showcase how consistent the notes can be as well. It shouldn't make you sound like a robot with these notes, but you never know. We always got to take a look. So for now, let's take a look at what this presentation will look like. I'm just going to edit it in the desktop app, even though we did it in the online version, just so we can take a look at my notes. There we go. Now let's actually take a look at our presenter view. So this is what it looks like. We have here introduction to Microsoft Copilot, and this is how I would present it reading my user notes that AI used for me. So here we go, a little fake presentation. Hello everyone, my name is Joe. Today we're talking about introduction to Microsoft Copilot. Microsoft Copilot is actually an AI powered intelligence code completion tool, and it uses machine learning to help developers write code more efficiently. It uses natural language processing to suggest code snippets, functions, and classes as developer types make it quicker and easier to write the code. There we go. So that's pretty cool. And then you go through your next one and you have, boom, all the information there. And then you can talk about each one. Awesome. So as you can see, we just built a presentation, we've changed the design, we've added some animation, and we've done this all in less than 10 minutes. As you can see, Copilot is so amazing and there's so much you can do with it. I hope you all enjoyed this course and I'll see you all next time. Thanks. Thanks for watching. To earn certificates and watch our courses without ads, check out learnitanytime.com.